Okay, I've got some good news and some bad news. The bad news is most blog posts out there are completely unprepared for this new wave of AI powered search. And if your content isn't optimized for both Google and AI search, it's going to get left behind. But the good news is you can optimize your posts so that Google and AI will show you some search love. And that's what we're going to go over in this video. So I'm going to walk you through a checklist that will help you rank high in both, giving you the edge you need to stay visible. I have got five tips for you on how to structure your content, how to use the right language, how to build authority. And at the end, I'm going to share a foolproof keyword placement checklist that you're going to want to screenshot. Hey, I'm Robin, your B2B marketing bestie. I have over 15 years experience writing and optimizing blog posts for my clients that have gotten top rankings in search engines. And I've also scored multiple mentions in the new AI searches for my clients. So let's get into the checklist. So before we start, I do want to mention that you're going to want to have your target keyword already identified for this blog post before you start optimizing. So if you haven't done that and you haven't done your keyword research, I'll link a video below that shows you how to do that. So you can hit pause, go watch that video and come back or hey, you can watch this now too and watch the other one later. Doesn't matter to me. So the number five tip that I have is to structure your content before you even start writing. Search engines, both Google and AI are obsessed with well-structured content. And what I mean by that is you want to provide good organization to your content. So you don't just want to start writing willy nilly and just go wherever the stream of consciousness takes you. I know some of my writers out there are like, let it flow. I just let my fingers go. But you don't really want to do that if you're trying to get ranked in search engines or in the AI overviews or in AI engines. So instead, you really want to outline before you start writing. So just write down an outline of what you want to cover in this post. So you write your headline, even a placeholder headline, and then write how you're going to structure the posts out. So you're going to write an intro, maybe, maybe you're going to cover the history of your topic. Maybe you're going to cover the benefits of whatever you're talking about. Maybe you want to talk about how it's applied. It just depends on your post, but you want to make sure that it follows a logical sequence and provide subheadings for each section. Subheadings are your friend. These sections help to break up content. They make it scannable and it helps the engines and people really understand what this post is all about and what each section is about. And a tip here is to make sure that you're using your H2 and H3 tags. This is going to be found in your content management software when you're uploading your post. Instead of just bolding the text, you want to use those H2 and H3 tags. The search engines understand what these tags mean. They know that it's a subhead and it gives it a little more context and gives it more of a hierarchy. If the text is just bolded, it's not going to give it a hierarchy in the search engine's eyes. Also use bullet points and numbered lists. These are great because they're very digestible, both to readers and search engines, and it helps the engines pull some of this information out to use as featured snippets in the overviews or in the search results. And a hot tip here is to analyze what's currently ranking at the top of those search engines and get an idea and an understanding of the content length, the structure and the search intent. And so you understand what Google is really looking for and you can match yours accordingly. Okay. So then the number four tip that I have is depth of content. If you want to rank in the search engines or the AI engines, you're going to want your content to be comprehensive, authoritative, and insightful. And so here are some tips on how to do that. So your goal is to cover the topic better than anybody else so that you get pushed up higher in those rankings. So you want to dive into subtopics, provide some real world examples if you have them, maybe case studies and some relevant data and statistics. And another great tip here is to use visuals. So things like images, diagrams, infographics, videos even. And here's a little tip. The AI engines actually can understand the images. This is something that Google and other search engines, the traditional search engines cannot do. They weren't able to really look at an image and, and read it and understand what that image was about but AI can. So you do want to include visuals. And this also helps your readers to understand the topic even further. And next you want to demonstrate EEAT or EAT, which is expertise, experience, authoritativeness, and trust. So a good idea might be to provide a bio at the end of your blog post to show your expertise and your experience in the topic. And then you want to cite credible sources and statistics. And this helps to build up your authority 
with both the search engines and your audience. And then another tip here, and this may not apply to every single blog post, but if you can, add some FAQ at the bottom. And this also actually applies to other pages as well, like your products and services pages. It's great to include these FAQ because the AI and traditional search engines love them because it gives very clear questions and answers. It's very direct and the answers are usually pretty concise and it's easy for them to pull out that content and maybe even use it as a featured snippet. All right, so the next one we're gonna talk about is readability. Readability refers to how easy it is to read your post. So are you using lots of jargon and complex language or are you making it really simple and straightforward and conversational? Both traditional search engines and AI search engines really like natural language. They have something called NLP, which is natural language processing, and this is what they thrive on. So if you ever notice, they try to produce language that sounds pretty human. And so it just makes sense that they're gonna want to source from content that sounds pretty human too. So you wanna use plain, simple language. Think about how your target audience would naturally talk and talk to them that way. And a trick is to use the Hemingway app. And this is an app that lets you paste in your content and it will analyze it and tell you how complex it is. We're shooting for about an eighth grade reading level or so, and it will tell you what level it's at and it'll point out which sentences are a little bit problematic or maybe overly complex or hard to understand, and then you can revise accordingly. Also, you wanna keep your paragraphs and sentences fairly short. So paragraphs should be maybe two to three sentences long, and then sentences, you don't want them to go on and on. So a good idea is to read your draft out loud, and if it doesn't sound like something that you would naturally say in a conversation, go back and revise. By the way, if you're finding these tips helpful, please take a moment to subscribe to my channel. This really does help me continue to create free B2B marketing content that will help you get more leads and help you get more business. And I have a question for you. So what is your biggest struggle when it comes to optimizing blog posts? Drop me a comment below because I would love to help. All right, so then the number two tip I wanna share is linking. And I'm talking about internal and external links to build your authority. So when I talk about internal links, what I'm talking about is links within your blog posts that link to other pages or blogs within your site. And this kind of helps create a network that Google or other search engines, AI engines too, I'm just gonna say search engines, so I, I don't have to keep repeating <laughs> both, but when I say search engines, I mean both the AI and, and the traditional search engines. So they like to follow these links when they're crawling these websites and following these links helps them understand how content is related to one another. And then we wanna talk about external links and these are links that link outside of your website. And you wanna use these at a minimum, but they are good to include sparingly because it helps to build authority. Just make sure that you are linking to really credible websites and sources. So say if you're citing some research or some data, put a link that cites that source. And this builds trust with your audience and the search engines. And then when you're linking your text, use descriptive anchor text. And what that means is when you put a link on that text, don't just say click here. Try to include a keyword or at least a descriptive phrase about what that link is going to. So then when that reader goes to that link, they're going to content that they expect to see based on the text that was in that link. And the next one we're gonna talk about is keyword placement. So you wanna place your keywords strategically throughout your post. I know a lot of people know that keywords need to be in a blog post, but they don't really understand where and they just kind of put them in randomly. But I'm gonna show you exactly where to put them. So you wanna put your keyword in the blog title. This is really important because this tells search engines that there's a very high likelihood that this post is really gonna be about this keyword and cover it comprehensively. And the next place you wanna put it is in the first sentence of copy. So putting your keyword in the first sentence also gives these search engines a clue that there's a high likelihood that this whole blog is going to be about this keyword topic. And then make sure you put it in some subheads. And we talked about subheads earlier in this video. So you wanna make sure that you're including a keyword in at least one subheading. Then you wanna include your keyword throughout the body copy naturally. So, you know, there's no magic number. I usually just say include it as many times as you can while still sounding natural. So back in the olden days of search engines, people would just put the keyword in a whole bunch and it didn't really matter what the context was, the search engines would just see this keyword repeated and it could potentially rank that way. But now they've gotten much smarter and much more sophisticated 
They know when you're keyword stuffing, and this is actually a black hat technique that you do not want to do. You could potentially get banned for it. And if your blog post truly is about this topic, you will be able to incorporate it pretty naturally throughout. So image alt text is the next place you want to place your keyword. And this is also going to be found in your content management software or editor. So when you place an image in your blog post, the editor is going to give you an option to include this image alt text. And this is basically just a description of what this image is. So this is really meant for people who are vision impaired and using screen readers and they can't see the image. So they rely on this alt text to tell them what this image is about. So you want the image to describe accurately what the image is about. You don't just want to stuff a keyword in there if that image is not about that keyword, but you can incorporate it somehow. For example, say there's an image of somebody working at a computer. You don't just want to put a keyword like HR software in there because it doesn't make sense. But you could say something like woman working on HR software at a computer. So you're including the keyword, but you're also accurately describing what that image is about. And then next we've got the meta description and you want to include a keyword here too. And the meta description is not something that you can actually see in a blog post. So it is something also that is going to be found in your editor, your editing software, and they will give you an opportunity to include a meta description. So the meta description is just a summary of what your blog post is about, and it should be no more than about 160 characters. So when you look at the search results, you see the blog title, and that's the thing that you click on. And then underneath it, there's a little description, and that is typically the meta description. And that does not directly help your search rankings, but it can help click through rate and that can help your search rankings. And I personally like to incorporate my keywords as I write so that I can incorporate them naturally when I'm constructing my sentences. But if you really can't do that, or if maybe you're trying to optimize a post that has already been written, then you can optimize it after the fact and you can even use AI, ChatGPT, for example, to help you optimize that post. So all you're gonna do is copy and paste your blog post into ChatGPT and then tell it, optimize this blog post for the keyword, blah, 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 whatever your keyword is, and optimize for traditional and AI search engines and be sure to include it in these places and then give it the list of where you wanna include it, which is the list that I just gave you just to make sure that it's including it in those places. And then it will give you a fully optimized post. Just make sure to proofread it and make sure that they got it right. Now, a big thing that people ask is how long should a blog post be? And this is a controversial topic in the SEO world. Some people say, no, word count doesn't matter. Other people say, yes, it matters. Your blog post needs to be 1500 words or so. It's a hot topic, so I actually created an entire video about it that you can click on right here that goes over whether content length matters, how and why, and if you can use it to help you get better search rankings. So I'll see you over there.